Okay, so before we start this question, what I would do is copy it, and we've got to put on some forces acting on P and Q. Well, first of all, let's take P. What we've got is the weight. Its mass is 3 kilograms, so the weight is going to act downwards. So we'll just put that in there. 3 kilograms, so that's going to be a force now, a weight of 3G newtons. We'll take G as 9.8 when we do calculations, okay? What else would there be acting on P? Well, it's resting on a smooth surface, so there's going to be a normal contact force, which I'm going to call the reaction. We'll call it R, and that would be R newtons. There'll be tension wanting to pull the particle P up the slope. So we'll mark that in tension T. So we'll call that T newtons. So there are all the forces acting on P. There's no friction because the plane is smooth. Okay. Let's move over to Q now. Now, Q is going to want to go down. We've got its weight, okay, acting downwards. The weight will be mg, mass is 2, so that's going to be 2g newtons. There'll be a tension acting upwards, okay. And that tension is going to be exactly the same as the tension over here. Quite often you ask why the tensions are the same. They're the same because this is a smooth pulley. If that was a rough pulley, the tensions would be different. But the pulley is smooth, so tensions are going to be the same. OK, what else have we got to put on here? Well, whenever I've got questions on planes, I always suggest drawing a dotted line inwards like this into the plane and also one in that direction, like that. And this angle of the plane always turns out to be this angle here, if you just apply simple uh, geometry. This will be the same angle there. That would be 30 degrees in there. I know that's 60 degrees but uh, because of the 90 degrees, but I'm not going to mark that in. What else does this diagram need? Well. Because these particles are gaining speed as they go up the plane and this particle gains speed as we go down, okay, then there's got to be acceleration. So I'd mark the acceleration of P upwards in this direction. Let's call it A, A meters per second per second. Now Q is going to accelerate as well and it's going to accelerate downwards. Now these accelerations are going to be exactly the same. And why are they the same? Well, because the string is inextensible. That is, it doesn't stretch. So as soon as Q starts to move, P will also start to move. If this was elastic, as soon as Q started to move, P wouldn't necessarily move off straight away. But because it's inelastic, then the accelerations are going to be exactly the same. OK, well, I think we've got everything that we need on this diagram to start the question. OK, for the first part, we've got to write down then two equations of motion for particles P and Q. And by equations of motion, we're talking about Newton's second law, F equals MA. So let's just have a look at P first of all. So say for P, just guide the reader in here, what we're doing, okay? Now, because the particle P is accelerating up the plane, I'm going to resolve up the plane, okay? So do a little inclined arrow there. So up the plane is taken positive. So what is that resultant force acting up the plane? Well, we've got all of T acting up the plane in the positive sense, so we start with T. 
R doesn't come into this because R is perpendicular to the direction that we are resolving. All right. But the weight here, 3g, okay, newtons, some of it acts parallel to the plane. This 3g newtons can be split into two components, one into the plane and one down the plane. And it's the one down the plane that we're interested in. And because it doesn't contain the angle of 30 degrees in this 90 degrees, because it excludes it, then the component down the plane will be 3g sine 30. Okay? I hope you're familiar with resolving or splitting a force into two components. If not, just go on to my website, look under the tutorial on splitting a force or resolving a force into two components. So we've got the component down the plane then is 3g sine 30 and it acts in the opposite direction to this sense so it's going to be minus 3g sine 30. Now this is the resultant force wanting to accelerate the particle up the plane and remember force, the overall resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration by Newton's law of motion. So the mass is 3 and the acceleration is A and that's our first equation. And what we've got to do now is the same again for Q. So we'll t look at Q here for Q. This is a lot easier than handling P. Resolving the direction of motion, always do that. Okay, so it's going downwards, so resolve downwards as being positive. We've got the positive force here, the weight, the weight of 2g newtons, so all of 2g acts downwards. And then we've got the tension acting upwards. All of that acts upwards, so it'd be minus t. It's in the opposite sense to our direction, our positive sense here. That's the resultant force. That resultant force equals mass times acceleration. The mass is 2 and the acceleration is A. And that's our second equation of motion. And that's what they wanted in this first part of the question. Okay.